Well, hello again. Um, as uh, as you probably know, my uh, my interest is in ET, alien visitation. Is the planet being visited? Um, is there anything to certain UFO ET visitation stories? That sort of stuff. Um, I'm not really interested in the stuff I stumbled across on the on the Miles Johnston channel. You know, the black goo, the super soldiers, um, you know, cyborgs being made in a secret base under Peasmore. Uh, I think he's all too ridiculous for words. Um, I did have a quick look at his channel the other day, the basis channel I think this was, and I saw someone on there called Mark Steele who's talking about uh, 5G is going to be installed, it's going to kill us all, and um, although it's uh, obviously absolute rubbish, um, I just thought I'd make a, a quick video about it because this guy uh, has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. He's completely clueless. Um, now I did wonder about whether I should do this video or not because I thought when I watched it I thought does this guy believe what he's saying you know because if he, if he really believes what he's saying then he's probably got some mental health issues and um, you know I really wouldn't want to make fun of him if, uh, if that's the case but uh, I'm not entirely sure so I'm going to do the video and uh, We'll take it from there. So uh, what I'll do is what I've done before. I'll just have uh, a couple of. T I'll just have some clips from his video, and I'll make comments um, about uh, some of the stuff that uh, he's saying. So here we go. Then this is uh, this is Mark Steele talking about 5G, the dangers of 5G uh, on the Basis Channel, and I'll leave a link to the uh, uh, the source video. <clears throat> Excuse me, below. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Steele is now going to tell us about uh, phased antenna arrays. Well, the, the, the very interesting uh, part about 5G is the uh, phased array antenna systems. So, and what I mean by phased array, it's a, it's a specific type of antenna that operates in unison with a number of other antennas and it's basically battlefield interrogation equipment. Uh, no, it isn't. Um, certainly it's an antenna that works um, uh, in conjunction with other antennas that are phased together. Uh, but it's, uh, and it may very well be used on the battlefield um, for um, communications, for radar maybe. But it's not battlefield specific. Um, broadcasting stations use phased arrays, you know, AM, FM radio stations. Uh, an AM radio station might use a phased array to shape the transmission, uh, uh, the shape of the signal, the actual lobe of, of the energy in a certain direction. Um, if you live in London, um, I think um, what used to be Radio 1 from Brookman's Park, I don't know what they call it these days, but. Um, uh, or, uh, no, actually, Capital Gold, when it used to be on 1548 kilohertz, I think it was. Um, it's a long time since, it's over 20 years since I've been, into, uh, been, been in the UK, but um, that from Saffron Green, that has a uh, sort of teardrop-shaped lobe, and they use a phased antenna array to achieve that. Um, yeah, civilian and military radars use phased arrays. Mobile uh, telephone networks today use phased antenna arrays. 4G would use phased antenna arrays. You know, 3G use phased antenna arrays. It's a term he's heard and he's latched onto it because he likes the sound of it. It's a phased antenna array. It's battlefield technology. No it isn't. Phased antenna arrays have been around for a very long time. Um, nothing whatsoever to do with battlefield technology. Okay, let's see what else he's got to say. Okay, let's see what he's saying here. 5G issue, it's totally experimental. It's 68, it's 70 megahertz frequency. What's been. 
870 megahertz frequency. Okay, now he's talking about microwave radiation causing all these problems. You've got bits of metal in your body. Um, 868-870 megahertz is not actually a microwave frequency. Now, if you look on the Wikipedia page, it will say that microwaves start at 300 megs. I think it's 300 megs, 300 gigs. Um, but uh, it will also say this also includes the UHF spectrum. And um, microwaves don't start until 1000 megahertz. One gigahertz is where the microwave region starts. So 868, 870 megahertz is not a microwave frequency. So, you know, he, does, he doesn't even know that the, the, the frequencies that he's saying that 5G are going to be using aren't even microwaves. Now, um, I'd be surprised if 5G is going to use this particular frequency. Uh, seems a bit low to me because I thought 5G was supposed to be greater bandwidth and all that sort of stuff. Generally, greater bandwidth is a bit further up the band spectrally, you know, so it'd be up in the gigahertz range. Um, and uh, of course the higher in frequency the go, you go the more bandwidth you get um, and uh, the faster your data rates more data you can get and all that sort of stuff and I thought that's what 5G was all about so I haven't actually looked that up to see whether they're thinking about putting 5G in the UK but certainly 868, 870 megahertz is not a microwave frequency and in fact that is the freed up part of the uh, television broadcast band the UHF uh, high band television band. Actually, Miles Johnson claims to be a broadcast engineer. You should actually know that. Um, <clears throat> and he's com he's uh, this this guy here, Mark Steele, is uh, is talking about these little 25 milliwatt uh, transmitters that are going to be on 868, 870 megahertz for the 5G. Uh, yet uh, something like seven miles away from Newcastle, where this guy lives, was uh, and probably still is a transmitting station with all the analog TV stations, BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, all pumping out 500,000 watts each, 500 kilowatts each. From uh, I can't remember the name of the um, of the site now, but I'll leave a link to it below. It's something like Pot, Pot something or other Hill. And uh, you can have a look at the information relating to that site. And if you have a look at the UHF television high band broadcasts uh, from that particular site, you'll see they're all 500 kilowatts. Um, <laughs> and this guy's talking about uh, 25 milliwatts uh, causing a problem. Um, he's clueless. Absolutely uh, clueless, this guy. Um, OK, let's see what else he's got to say. Okay, now he's going to tell us that uh, the 5G, these 5G transmitters are installed on every uh, lamppost in Gateshead. And mainly our local county, our local authority will allow 31,875 transmitters on all of every LED streetlight. No what, do these what do these transmitters look like, Mark? What should people be looking for? It's a, it's about a, uh, it's a four inch uh, in mat, in metric. It's probably 20, 25 mil. You know, around about the four and a bit inches uh, size. Looks very, very innocuous. Doesn't look dangerous. Yeah. Okay. So it's about four inches in size. Now he's only given us one dimension here. This is a box on top of a lamp post. It's a 5G phased array. It's going to fry your brain. <clears throat> um, he's given us one dimension, it's four inches, so it's not four inches by four inches by four inches, it's a cube, four inches by three inches by two inches, it's just four inches, just four inches. Now, a frequency that is mentioned, 868, 870 megahertz, um, there are certain rules with regard physical size of antennas. Um, laws of physics that apply to radiating elements at different frequencies used in antenna systems and uh, phased arrays quite well most of the time half wave dipoles might be cross dipoles dipoles generally are a half wavelength uh, in size in length now half wavelength at 868 870 megahertz is six inches okay 
So just one element will not fit in his four inch box, let alone a phased array. And to make a phased array, um, you would need a number of these six inch elements, and they would have to be spaced about a quarter wave apart. Now the half wave dipole is about six inches, so a quarter wave is about three inches. So you're gonna have to have a number of these things spaced about three inches apart to get any kind of phased array and you're not going to be able to fit one element in a four inch box. So this guy is talking complete rubbish. Okay, uh, uh, not to mention that he, if this absolute drivel was real, how much would it actually cost to put this <laughs> I can't remember what the figure he mentioned uh, was, you know, on every single lamppost in Gateshead. <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine the, uh, uh, the local council forking out for that. But just, just, just what he's saying, just if you, if you just consider the, um, uh, just what he's saying, he has absolutely no understanding of what he's saying. Um, it's absolute rubbish. 875 transmitters on all of every LED street light. No what did it? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, they're about four inches. Uh, yes, they're about four inches, one dimension. Yeah. Okay, now uh, let's just move this on because this, this is quite funny stuff, really. I mean, this, as I say, I don't know whether this guy is just a, whether he's a delusional nutcase and he actually does believe this, or uh, whether he's just another typical you know, garbage spruker that you find on the, uh, on the basis channel. Um, they just do it for fun or fame or whatever, you know. Bit of, uh, a bit of uh, minor celebrity status, maybe. What else we got here? Uh, let's try this bit. Probably 20, 25 mil, you know, around about the four and a bit inches uh, size. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I should have queued it up, but it, it, it's only uh, probably a, uh, 30 or 40 seconds away, the next bit, so I'll just let it run. Looks very, very innocuous, doesn't look dangerous at all, believe you, mate, it's extra. Uh, that's because uh, if, they, if, if these four inch lumps are on top of the lamppost, they're going to have nothing whatsoever to do with 5G, and they will be completely harmless. Extremely dangerous. These transmitters are on 25 a day, seven days a week in breach of the carbon reduction policy. <laughs> in breach of the carbon reduction policy. <laughs> okay, so who's paying the electricity bill for these things? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a carbon reduction policy now in breach, in breach of the carbon reduction policy. That means you, you can't have a light bulb on 24 hours a day, does it, if you want to in your house? I don't know, sounds a bit, uh, sounds a bit odd to me. Sounds a bit odd. Mind you, it's a good fit for the basis channel, really, isn't it? It's all odd. Okay, let's see what uh, what else he's got to say. There's no necessity for them to be on continuously, but they are. Are they on a... Uh, well, if it was a mobile phone system, it would need to be on all the time, because uh, even if it wasn't transmitting all the time, it would need to be... Uh, the receivers would need to be on so that if um, it picks something up, it could activate a transmitter and um, uh, carry out the uh, the two-way call. So uh, these things do have to be on all the time, 24 hours a day, these uh, these mobile phone installations. They are now. So uh, this, again, is just more bloody rubbish. He's completely clueless, this guy. A post. They're on a... Um, dumb as a post, yeah, for sure. They're on the top of an LED streetlight. I've posted a, uh, an image to uh, Myers, so he should have a photograph. Any? That's the point, actually. Yeah. Well, where, where, why don't we? Why can't we see some photographs of these things? One who has new LED streetlight, they increase your risk of cancer. They double the risk of cancer from the pulse modulated light from those LEDs. Hmm. Um, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. So I don't know anything about LED streetlights, but if they're pulse modulated, it will probably be because they can actually save power by doing that. You know, so you can have pretty short on times, fairly long off times. We're talking about milliseconds, 
and your eye doesn't notice it. It looks like it's a continuous, continuously lit when it's probably off for something like 80% of the time as a power saving thing. That would be my guess as to how these things work. Um, certainly be completely harmless. Uh, it would rely on the eye's persistence in the same way that um, televisions would. Um, you know, cathode ray tube televisions um, relied entirely on the eye's um, persistence to uh, to actually be able to produce a, a picture that you recognise as a picture. Uh, this guy looks old enough to me to have watched an awful lot of CRT TV, and this woman too. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's no more <laughs> it's no more harmful than looking at a uh, at a television. So that's absolute rubbish. So councils are rolling it out. Obviously, they're going to save quite a you know amount of money on the back of rolling out changing these uh, incandescent lighting systems. However, oh okay, so it's, it is about saving money. So the LEDs they consume less power. Uh, you can uh, pulse modulate them, uh, pulse width modulate them. Um, so yeah, so you get a decent amount of light and you save a lot of money on electricity. So it's completely harmless technology. They're going to make our population sick. People are going to develop cancers. I mean, God help young children. I mean, they, you know, it, it, the, the latency, so let's say the time it takes from exposure to this type of radiation and developing cancers could be 15, 10, or 20, 30 years. We won't see an epidemic in this country for 10 or 20 years. Um, this is absolute rubbish. I'm just going to stop that there and see what else he's got to say. Uh, just having a quick look at this. Um, uh, earlier this week, Gateshead Council put out a Facebook post encouraging people to ignore conspiracy theories about the dangers of 5G radiation, adding there's no scientific basis or credible evidence for any of these scare stories. That's this bottom paragraph here. Um, He's hopping from one subject to another. He's going from 5G being secretly installed on these lampposts to the lampposts themselves being pulse width modulated. He's leaving from one one conspiracy theory to another. And I think it's just, it, it, this is all about getting his face on um, social media, being a little bit of a minor celebrity. Um, I don't think he honestly believes this. Um, it's, uh, um, if he does, he's, he's, he's clearly got absolutely no understanding of uh, what he's talking about. Okay, I'll stop that one there. This might be worth a quick comment. To, because obviously everybody will think, oh, he's obviously a lunatic, he's just went totally off it. <laughs> well, I suppose eventually he had to be right about something. Bloomberg reported only a couple of months ago that the 5G array that was being used in uh, South Korea was being used to shoot wild boar in the jungle. <laughs> now, I know exactly what they mean. That's the phased array antenna system <laughs> where the focus of the signal acts as a weapon. And that's obviously what can be used on the battlefield. Of <laughs> no, absolute, uh, absolute rubbish. Absolute nonsense. I haven't read that article, but um, if the article exists at all, and they were using 5G... <laughs> 5G for hunting animals, it would have been for tracking them, Not they wouldn't be using a 5G signal to uh, uh, to kill animals. The amount of energy you would need to be able to kill an animal over any <laughs> over any, <laughs> over any distance with RF, um, no, nah, you're not going to be able to do it with 5G. Uh, certainly not. This is uh, just more uh, paranoid rubbish. Okay, let's... Uh, Actually, let's just see what, 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 what he's puckering up for. So not only can your weapon identify your target, they can actually harm it. Nah. Absolute rubbish. Okay, let's move on. I am uh, struggling through this, uh, this video. It's really quite painful to watch. Uh, drivel is uh, being over complimentary in the extreme but uh, here goes it's nothing that we don't expect what's most certainly uh, the case as far as uh, veterans are concerned is they're now going to come back to a country that's going to be suffering from the same issues that they suffered on the battlefield, battlefield. 
Yeah, because, like I said, 5G is basically battlefield interrogation equipment. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. <laughs> battlefield interrogation equipment. Um, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> I don't know where this bloke gets his ideas from, but of course that sounds dramatic, doesn't it? You know, it's battlefield technology. You know, it's, it's a weapon system. It's not really a mobile phone system. It's a weapon system. The government's putting it in because they want to kill you. Um, have you ever heard such rubbish? And that brings me to a town near you. Uh, in, in fact, can I just interrupt? Sorry. Um, so basically, if people are watching this show today and they're thinking, well, which country can I move to to avoid this? I mean, you and I met at the AV9 conference at Milton Keynes at the beginning of May. <laughs> well, that explains a lot, doesn't it, really? The AV9 conference, really. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's just a collect collection of... Uh, Paranoid, delusional idiots, all in, all in a, all in a, all in the same place at the same time, and then they, then they go out and they, uh, and they, and they propagate all this nonsense that uh, you know they, they hear each other spruiking, and that's what it is. It's alarmist rubbish. And I seem to recall you mentioning like countries like South Korea, America, Cambodia. All these countries are rolling out with 5G, is that correct? 5G, 5G it's, a, it's, a, it's a globalist uh, plan to roll out 5G uh, on, the provi on, the, on, the, let's say, on the myth that it's got something to do with a mobile device. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, let's just uh, see if I can get a little bit further into this. Transmission. Absolute poppycock once again. Uh, 5G is basically a weapon system that's been rolled out across the West. Rubbish. Uh, that's the poppycock. Uh, um, 5G is not a weapon system. Uh, this is just paranoid drivel. Okay, let's see what else he's got to say. Okay, it gets crazier and crazier. On uh, battlefields, and have thought, you know, this is impossible. How can we get that many people? Uh, suffering this neurological disorder. Well, just go to Bristol University and see how many children are committing suicide at Bristol University because of the absolutely appalling uh, experiment that's going on down there in relation to 5G. Um, <clears throat> what you have to ask yourself is, I actually Googled this, and uh, there have been a number of student suicides at Bristol University. And I think these conspiracy theorists will jump on this sort of thing and, uh, and use it to further their cause or to strengthen their ridiculous claims. Now, he's saying that the people are committing suicide at Bristol University because of there's some sort of 5G experiment going on. Um, I think there was uh, there, are, there has been a few suicides at uh, Bristol University, um, but you've got to bear in mind there are thousands of students. You're talking about a handful that have committed suicide. Um, None of the lecturers have committed suicide. Um, and you'll find if you read about it, in fact, I might leave a link to that um, uh, below. Um, I think I saw this Wikipedia or something about the Bristol University suicides. And uh, this handful of students were suffering from depression. They'd all seen the shrink and they'd all been, or the GP or whatever, and uh, they'd all been prescribed antidepressants. And um, to be perfectly honest, I think uh, it's probably the uh, the antidepressants that have caused them that have pushed them over the edge because they're mood altering mood altering drugs. I think it's a big mistake to take to put that sort of that sort of stuff into your system uh, to actually take uh, antidepressants, mood altering drugs, and I think that's probably the uh, the root cause of the uh, of the suicides. It's going to have nothing whatsoever to do with five uh, G. That's just uh, bloody ridiculous. 5G was rolled out at this university. I remonstrated with them when I found out about this experiment. I mean, these people are on breach of the Nuremberg Code. This is absolute... <laughs> In breach of the Nuremberg Code. Well, 
Nuremberg Code, I think goes back to 1947, it was something about um, some rules set up for human experimentation. But the the students, of course, I think it's 25,000 students, and I think about you know, four or five have committed suicide. So this is just absolute rubbish, um, and uh, they're not they're not going to be they're not experiment they're not experimenting on the students using 5G. I mean, do you think the dean of the college would be sitting in there if there was some sort of radio <laughs> electromagnetic radiation experiment going on? filling the halls with um, microwave radiation that isn't really microwave radiation because he does, has no idea where the microwave spectrum starts. Um, if the whole place is saturated in microwave radiation, do you think the dean and the lecturers are going to be in there? Um, what about, uh, you know, what about the other 25,000 students? It's just, just beyond rubbish. Uh, okay, let's uh, see what else he's got to say. That, that weapon system could be fully operational in two years, and believe us, that would be a, a, a significant issue uh, to all of us. The MPs, our local MPs, what, what we found locally, they're putting the phone down on people. Councillors running away from people in the street. Uh, local authorities now just not answering people. They've, they've basically been told to shut up shop. So they've shut the democratic process in. They're running around like headless chickens, and the reason for that is because they now realise that what I've actually told them is in fact correct. Um, you know, I mean, that image uh, Miles just put up there before, LED streetlights do attract small flying pollinators, and obviously at close proximity, that 25 milliwatt transmitter, I suggest anybody go out tonight, have a look for the pollinators around your lights because they're attracted to them as you'll see in that picture they're dead they're annihilated and the only difference uh yeah he's hopping around a little bit here because uh, he's talking about led street lights and then he's talking about 25 milliwatt transmitters so <clears throat> what's he saying here they're attracted to the uh to the led lights but the 25 milliwatt uh 5 5g phased arrays that are, that are inside his four inch box and then killing the insects. It's annihilating all these insects. You can see the insects there, big clouds of insects are attracted to the, uh, they're attracted to the light. You've got the lamppost, got the lamppost here. All this, this cloud of insects and it's instant death, instant death. So when was the last time you walked past the lamppost and saw a huge pile of dead insects at the base of it, all around the base of it? Every time you walk past the lamppost, you're slowed down because you're wading through a two-foot thick layer of dead insects. Anyone recall doing that? Anyone recall seeing dead insects scattered all around the bottom of a lamppost? Hmm, I suspect not. Just when you think he couldn't get get more paranoid, we've got uh, we've got this man that can uh, interfere with the molecular structure of your the contents of your bag of crisps. <laughs> impact the toxicity levels from the multiples of these RFID tags, and I'm going to give you a bit of a scoop because nobody's heard this before. <laughs> because he's just made it up. Because it's rubbish. I've never actually spoke uh, publicly about this particular issue. Because you get laughed off the stage, mate. But this is really interesting. It's interesting from a you know, the GM people, so anybody who's interested in good health. I can actually use one of those RFID tags in your packet of crisps and start to change the DNA in the food. Really? Yes, so I can change, I can actually change and affect the, the constituency parts of your food. Well, they're talking about using 60 gigahertz frequency, and that's an attenuation oxygen uh, frequency. So consequently, we can start looking at disassociating molecular bonds. Now, if I can change DNA at a lot less power and a lot less different frequencies to that. But I love it. Power and frequencies and 60 gigahertz to interfere with the DNA in your packet of crisps. It's, uh, this is just rubbish. Absolute twaddle. If I really wanted to, you know, sort of get into it, so... Uh, how does it see. work, Mark? How, how does it actually, because we're talking about a barcode on a packet of crisps, can affect the DNA? No, no, it's an antenna. It's a, what that is, it's a directional antenna. 
So if I've got, if, well, it's like me, your mobile phone in your pocket, the antenna in your mobile phone in your pocket, right, breaches the FCC guidelines. It's not inside you, it's actually in your pocket. And you're obviously... Oh, oh, um, I hadn't heard that. I might, uh, I, might, I might look that up. I doubt it. Uh, the FCC regulations, of course, apply to uh, radio devices in America, Federal Communications Commission, uh, as Ofcom would deal with uh, radiation, RF radiation levels in the UK. The ACMA deal with it in Australia, but um, FCC has got nothing whatsoever to do with radio uh, RF levels in Gateshead. But um, mm, I might look that up. Uh, but uh, I, I, I'd seriously doubt it. So it's exactly the same as having that antenna, uh, putting it onto a packet, right? I can yeah. actually then fire a signal at that packet, and that packet, anything within that area, depending on how much power density and what frequency I'm throwing at it, I can start to change the constituency parts in that in that package. I mean, I can irradiate your DNA on, in your mobile phone. You've got your mobile phone in your pocket. It's one of the reasons why we've seen a massive drop in sperm count. They know what's causing it. It's mobile phones in people's pockets. I don't know anyone that carries a mobile phone in their trouser pocket, do you? I carry my mobile phone in my breast pocket on my shirt or um, breast pocket on my jacket. I don't have it. I don't have it in my tr mobile phone in my trouser pocket. So you know, if I can damage the DNA in your sperm from your mobile phone in your pocket, believe us, that... Tw no, he can't. He's, um... Again, this is just... This is just absolute rubbish. This has got nothing whatsoever to do with the 5G mobile telephone network. Um... He's sort of hopping around all over the place here. It's, it's sort of going from bad to worse. This is just absolute drivel. 25 milliwatt transmitter, which is extremely powerful, by the way. No, it isn't. You had a 25 milliwatt transmitter, you're not going to be able to. <laughs> you're not going to be able to do anything with that, really. I mean, 25 milliwatts. I doubt 25 milliwatts would even penetrate a bag of crisps, let alone do anything to what was inside. Outside of your home, I can fire a signal at the RFID tag in, let's say, a can of pop. So, you, let's say you've got a very well known brand of. Coca-Cola. Yeah. You've got a Coke cool can in your home, very good brand, and you, you you think that's a fantastic product. You're very thirsty one day, you go in, and let's say I've hacked into your system, I use the RFID tag in your can of pop, on your can of pop, sorry, to change that, let's say I, I, I attack uh, the molecular structure <laughs> and I turn the, uh, any of the oxygen in there so you've got carbon dioxide, I start to mess around with it, with the oxygen molecules in there. And I yeah, if you let a can of Coke go flat, uh, all the CO2 is gone. You can still drink it, can't you? Turn it into, let's say, O3. That's 60 gigahertz, all right? Yeah. Absolute garbage. I'm afraid um, I can't take any more of this. Uh, so, if you see Mr Steele spruiking all this paranoid rubbish, uh, just put a line through it. You know, don't be worried about it. He's, he's talking out of his backside. There's absolutely nothing to any of this, anything he said in this video. It's complete garbage. All right, well, uh, if you struggled through the video this far, congratulations. Maybe I'll catch you again.